हेलो एंड वेलकम टू आर सी आई एस चैनल आप सभी का आर सी के नव शिखर चैनल में स्वागत है आज का हमारा टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन है अपर लिम प्रोस्थेटिक्स एंड टू अडेप दिस डिस्कशन वी हैव आर एक्सपर्ट्स फ्रॉम एंडोलाइट इंडिया लिमिटेड मिस्टर अनिरुद्ध त्रिपाठी हुज बीन वर्किंग एज मैनेजर फॉर ट्रेनिंग एंड रिसर्च फॉर आर व्यूअर्स इफ दे वॉन्ट टू आस्क एनी क्वेश्चन और इफ दे वॉन्ट टू शेयर एनी इन्फॉर्मेशन विद अस they can call us at our toll free number 18001120008 our phone number is 26511613 and our fax number is 26511609 as the topic is upper limb prosthetics upper limb that means the level from the shoulder to our fingers that and prosthetics is the changing or the restoring of the lost part or the body part and today we will specifically discuss about the upper limb that is restoring the lost upper limb part of our body so today sir what do we all have so we will start with the up, uh, today's topic is upper limb prosthetics and we will start from the various reason and the level of amputation so in upper limb uh, it is difficult to manage for a patient like uh, uh, compared to the lower limb lower limb patient can walk the function of the prosthesis is to take the weight of the body and walk uh, with the prosthesis but for upper limb it is very difficult because patient has to do whatever comes in his uh, regular day to day life so in upper limb prosthetics uh, we have uh, first we'll start with the movements of the body Uh, upper limb uh, pros, uh, <coughs> mainly the shoulder shoulder joint has a, a three dimensional movement this that is a rotation flexion extension adduction and abduction and elbow has a flexion extension and the forearm forearm has a medial and lateral rotation and wrist has a full uh, movement circumduction to so, sir in movements ki wajah se kuch farak aata hai amputated ho gaya ek insaan mm-hmm. ka agar ni- elbow tak ho gaya hai उसको अगर हमने एक प्रोस्थेटिक्स दिया तो उसकी वजह से मूवमेंट में कोई फर्क आता है प्रोस्थेसिस में मेनली uh, हमको हम कोशिश यही करते हैं कि उसका मैक्सिमम मूवमेंट जो है हम रिस्टोर कर सके तो हमारा एम यही होता है कि उसके बॉडी के मूवमेंट्स को रिस्ट्रिक्ट में करके मैक्सिमम मूवमेंट्स uh, को हम उसको प्रोवाइड कर सके उसके बाद है लेवल ऑफ एम्पुडेशन इसमें स्केलेटल लेवल मैं दिखा रहा हूँ दैट इज शोल्डर डिसाइडेशन is a uh, limb loss from the shoulder joint and above that that there is a four quarter amputation four quarter amputation mein shoulder joints and the scapula bone that is wing bone uh, behind the I mean back side triangular you can feel that triangular shape bone. bone that both uh, that is removed and uh, after that is elbow disarticulation uh, that in that uh, elbow is removed so only we have the arm not forearm and below uh, below elbow there is uh, nothing so we have to replace the function of elbow and wrist and the digits after that uh, below elbow that is also called a transradial transradial is uh, uh, the forearm has a radius bone so that bone is when uh, cut so that that uh, amputation is called of <coughs> transradial amputation and after that the lower is the wrist disarticulation and the partial hand in which the in wrist disarticulation the uh, prosthetic fitment is very difficult and uh, partial partial hand amputation the only cosmetic uh, re- restoration is important more than the function because he, the patient has the f- function of wrist and he has the partial amputation of uh, his hand so he can manage with the partial but he, the fingers has lost his function the same if we see in on the body so uh, in gen- uh, for in general terms for uh, layman's language the four quarter is the entire shoulder is removed and shoulder disarticulation the shoulder is there but the below sol- shoulder there is no arm and for uh, for um, entire limb is lost and the trans humeral above above elbow that is the part of uh, upper limb is avail- i mean for arm is arm is available but forearm and elbow is missing so like in case of sir like if we have vasting like the bulk is not present of of the forearm mm-hmm. in that case also we can give prosthetics and forearm if the uh, 
through radius, I mean the bone is cut, the radius bone, we can give the prosthesis and that is the best level for the prosthetic, prosthetic uh, replacement because in that uh, we can restore the maximum function of uh, upper limb. So, the less lo uh, joint is missing, the more function we can achieve from the uh, processes. No, like not only amputation, agar uski jo hath hai, wo functional nahi hai, it just mm -hmm. ki uska bulk hi nahi hai, wo bhoat patla sa hath hai ekdam, mm -hmm. there is no function. So, us case mein bhi we can give prosthetics? Patla, see prosthesis dene ke liye we have to consider, uh, means we have to assess the patient, usko assessment karke fir uski jo requirement wo dekhte hai, wo agar patient ko functional processes चाहिए तो we assess patient's power and the requirement उसकी कितनी power है उसकी requirement कितनी मतलब क्या है processes से वो क्या achieve करना चाहता है अब जो patient these patient doesn't have power at all तो फिर उसको हम लोग मतलब as a professional we recommend for a cosmetic for aesthetic purpose only तो patient can replace the I mean structure he'll get but he'll not get any function out of it Then type of processes, there are two type of, types of processes, one is endoskeletal and the another one is exoskeletal. So endoskeletal processes, it has a tubular structure, I mean in that uh, and the components are uh, like uh, internal part of uh, our body like bones and uh, over that after fitting the processes, we cover it with the foam, foam covering, so the appearance look like a normal human body, I mean human part. An exoskeletal is a structure that is hollow from inside, an outer structure is rigid and it looks like a normal human body, I mean normal human missing part. So for uh, upper limb prosthetics, we have uh, three type of uh, prosthesis. One is the cosmetic and that is only for aesthetic uh, restoration. So in that ca in case patient has uh, difficulty in using a prosthesis or he has no power to use the processes, so we use aesthetic processes to restore his body image. Second is a cosmo functional. Again, it has a, a cosmo functional has a two type of processes. One is body powered, and the second one is externally powered. So, in body powered, uh, we use harness. I mean, straps. Various type of straps. Uh, straps to gain to gain the control of uh, prosthesis and to use the function of processes and in externally powered that is myoelectric we use the external uh, power source from the outside the body so we use a battery and the uh, myoelectrics for the control of the prosthesis so in <coughs> externally powered in myoelectrics we use the muscle signal patient's muscle signal to operate the prosthesis and the third one is the functional prosthesis Again, functional processes has uh, two type: the body powered and external power. External power. So, difference between cosmo functional and functional is the cosmo functional has function as well as cosmetics. So, it looks like a normal arm, but it has a function as well. And the functional is uh, it looks little bit. I mean, acceptance for the functional processes is very less because it looks crooked. There is a ho means uh, we have a different type of uh, hooks and uh, power grippers, plier or uh, uh, different type of tools for the uh, vocational requirement of the uh, amputee. So that means in case of cosmetic, uh, cosmetic aesthetics if you are talking about, if a finger is included or uh, like it has been amputated, so just to replace to show that yes the finger is there just for the cosmetic purpose. Yeah, in, in case of partial hand, we do not uh, really go for the functional processes because in that uh, few parts of the body, body is remaining like uh, if uh, you, the patient has lost one or two fingers so he can replace the finger with the uh, silicon prosthesis but he can use his other fingers and digit and all joints of the limb for the function of uh, his day to day activity so in that case uh, only we use for cosmetic purpose of finger and cosmo functional is when it is used for functional purpose cosmo functional is like in india this type uh, cosmo functional is more popular about the wrist uh, amputation because patient wants the appearance of the prosthesis close to his original limb so in that uh, it looks natural prosthesis but it has a function like uh, the main function of the process is the opening and closing of hand the picking up the things so he get the function of from the processes and looks like natural and the functional is not so popular because of the uh, uh, 
various i mean uh, social stigma uh, associated with the, this uh, disability because it's a visible sign of uh, with disability so uh, amputee or people don't want to show their disability to others or the, to the society personality gets affected because of, of that of course and the functional is uh, restricted i mean they use within their workshop or their uh, occasion i mean work area but outside then again they change it to cosmo functional and uh, uh, come in the society so generally this functional are more of in demand because they prove uh, they serve not the both functional. the functional cosmo functional is more in demand not the functional because functional after limb loss patient has a mindset is i have lost limb i cannot work i cannot do the function I, as i was doing previously so he just uh, think about the cosmetic appearance but uh, he expects some function from the prosthesis basic functions so he go for the cosmo uh, cosmo functional type no basic assessment for uh, the prosthesis is when we uh, the patient come for a prosthetic fitment we assess for the motivation and goal of the patient like how motivated he is for using a prosthesis and what are his goal for the uh, for, uh, by using the prosthesis what uh, he expect from the prosthesis and then examination of a residual arm that is amputated uh, part or we call it a uh, stump so we examine the residual part of the body and see what type of processes we can fit or what type of socket we can design for the uh, amputee then sensitive area is of course uh, a very important po point because when we fit a prosthesis and the uh, residual limb the part is very sensitive because of the amputation or the loss so because of accident so if the part is very sensitive it becomes the patient compliance is very low in that case so we need to take our care of the sensitive part and we uh, design the socket accordingly uh, for the patient then uh, this uh, we are uh, talk about how it affects uh, the patient's uh, the amputee's life because whether it is uh, he wants the patient want the processes only for the cosmetic purpose or to restore his body image or for a function so that is important because if patient is uh, having a uh, has to represent to uh, certain company or certain thing or he has to communicate in a mass or represent something or he has only table job so that and again uh, if a patient has a requirement as a working in a workshop or doing the hard work for his uh, uh, earning of Family. so fam, for earning for family so according to that we see we have, what is affecting means amputation is uh, what which part of his life amputation is affecting so according to that we consider the process for the occupation of a person also matters while assessing yeah occupation is very important for the assessment and the fitment of the processes and uh, check of edema and residual arm i mean edema is a swelling so we see how much swelling the patient has because once we see a uh, fit a prosthesis after using the pro processes over a period of time the swelling get reduced so fitting of the processes become very loose so prosthesis uh, fitment if the fitting of prosthesis reduce so this patient get loss of function in the process it means he cannot control the processes with uh, uh, loose sockets so if he has a uh, swelling we advise him for go for exercise and then bandaging and reduce the swelling or we design a socket in such a way that the changes in the stump well volume doesn't affect the socket fitment so you can use the uh, function of the processes very effectively in regular basis so so if a child is there the child congenital anomaly is present the child does not have a limb so in that case also we give prosthetics yeah it is important for a child Uh, I mean, congenital anomaly is a patient uh, or child has a loss of limb since birth. We see the what, what level of the loss is that. I mean, if he has, but he has a shortening. I mean, the limb is present, but it is not grown completely. So we give extension type of prosthesis. We uh, see the power in the his residual. I mean, his uh, un undeveloped arm, um. and then we fit the prosthesis accordingly. I mean, if he is. has a very lean and thin um we fit i mean we cover and give the shape as, and restore the compare with compared to the normal side and make it uh, as normal as uh, we 
possible. So applying prosthetic does not restrict any development? Applying prosthesis does not restrict because uh, it has a scope for uh, uh, grow. So, but in child case what happens we need to uh, periodically visit I mean, patient has to visit. Follow uh, send, up, uh, fo yeah, follow up is very important and during follow up the professional assess uh, what uh, changes is occurring in the his body and what type of changes prosthesis require. So, in child case it is I mean very common to change processes very uh, periodically because only the socket part we change very uh, uh, often. So, so like uh, if there is a case where there is congenital anomaly present and the child has below elbow uh, the underdeveloped uh, ha hand or forearm mm -hmm. whatever, then in that case if a child is given the prosthetics. So, this part would not it be affected? No, uh, in fact that is good for a um, I mean child because if he has uh, below the elbow, I mean the arm below the elbow and he has elbow joint and the shoulder joint. So, the, it is very important to give a child prosthesis because then it, the, it develops the habit of using that prosthesis uh, since childhood. So, the child learns how to use the prosthesis from uh, uh, as he grows. And uh, that improves the muscle strength because if he is uh, using a prosthesis, uh, it requires some power, and that power uh, Im improves the muscle. I mean, muscle power of the patients, uh, and it does not stop the growth. If you, the if uh, suppose he does not use the prosthesis, so what will happen? Uh, that uh, limb will not grow because of unused, and it will get uh, atrophied. Atrophied is mean the growth will be very limited of that part. So, once we uh, see such patient, we motivate the parent to get get a prosthesis for the child and get it fitted so that he started using because he, he will not know, he will break it very often, but it is good because he, he once he will see something there, he will start using it, he will uh, uh, develop his own technique to use it and that will improve his overall health. He adapts it as it, it body is developing and he makes it as a body part. Then. Yes, right. So, different uh, assessment <coughs> movements must be present. Yes, we see for the shoulder movement when we see we get a patient we see what are the joints uh, present with the patient and what are movements he can perform because after accident or after amputation certain muscles are lost. So, after losing muscle what are the movements present in the joint that is important because if uh, this body part prosthesis body part processes certain movement is very important to operate the processes. If the patient does not have certain movement or certain muscle, so it will become it becomes very difficult to use the processes. Then we in that case recommend for the cosmetic processes. And the movements are very common like uh, adduction, abduction, circumduction and the posterior and anterior movement. I mean abduction is the movement away from the body. If I take any limb, any part away from the body, that is abduction and towards the body is adduction. Then flexion is the bending of the joint and extension is making straight. And uh, circumduction is uh, a circular mo motion of the particular joint. So, like these moments if <coughs> there is shoulder amputation if we can say, but some part in generally I have seen like in amputation some part of it still remains like maybe it is called the residual power. I residual stump, uh, residual part we say. So, in shoulder if it is a shoulder disarticulation there will not be any uh, residuum be beyond that level. And in upper uh, means above elbow I means above elbow is above the elbow and below the shoulder any level between in between these two joint is a above elbow process I mean amputation. So, in that uh, there is a residuum of uh, arm. So, with that arm we see, we assess the arm, what power the patient has and what type of socket he can go, what are the goals and then according to that we design various stock, there are various type of socket design. So, we see which, what type of socket is suitable for the patient's requirement and then we select a socket and then go for a fabrication and fitment of the So, in patient. that case generally when the residual uh, arm is left, then the person or the patient is asked to do some mm -hmm. movement or carry on some of the exercises. What does that effect when the person is not able to use that arm or the upper limb, that limb of the patients and what is the use of those exercises? Exercise is the important for the improving the muscle power 
because using a body body powered processes require a lot of uh, effort to get function from the processes so we recommend uh, exercise because it is important to get certain movement from the uh, that part to operate the processes and get the function otherwise if patient is not getting any function from the processes then uh, that doesn't comply with the process and then just they hang it uh, in the room and they don't use it so what are the different other parts we have for the assessment in assessment we see for the bony prominences like for weight tolerance because when we fit a processes uh, entire weight whenever patient lift something or perform any activity there are certain area where the pressure comes so we see whether those area are can tolerate the pressure which is generated by the processes or different part of the socket so we see for the bony prominences because it is very difficult to tolerate any pressure on the bony prominent prominence so we see the whether the prominences he have can tolerate the pressure or weight and then we see the axilla because axilla it is important we when we apply a strap on normal side because to operate a prosthesis we apply a strap normal side and that give, gives a lot of pressure in the axilla and because of that pressure patient may get some numbness or tingling sensation in their limb and then they get scared and uh, stop using the prosthesis and this distal uh, end of the residual limb that is the uh, distal end is the lowermost end of the residual part so we see whether there is any bony prominence or there is scar or neuroma neuroma is a uh, uh, neuroma pain is very uh, difficult to tolerate because it is a pain direct to the nerve not to the skin or any part but direct to the nerve and patient does not i mean can cannot tolerate the pain so we see whether the neuroma is present or whether the bone is prominent at lower end or uh, the lower end is grafted and uh, sutured nicely so till now we were discussing about what are the different movements at the upper limb then we discussed about what are the different levels of amputation that is the below elbow above elbow below the shoulder these are the different levels of ap amputation then we were discussing about the different types of prosthetics endoskeletal and exoskeletal endoskeleton which are used inside or which which are not hollow from inside and the exoskeleton they have a hole they just mo more the, for the appearance part then we had the cosmo uh, cosma aesthetics which is used for the cosmetic appearance only having prosthetics does not mean that it is functional it is also used for the cosmetic purpose so as to give a personality development for the person we'll further continue our discussion after a short break The chief handicap of the blindness is not blindness but the attitude of seeing people towards them. आइए जानने और समझने की कोशिश करते हैं कि बधिरांधता यानी डेफ ब्लाइंडनेस क्या है बधिरांधता एक स्थिति है जिसमें दृष्टिहीनता एवं सुनने की शक्ति में कमी आती है तथा जिससे विचारों के आदान प्रदान और रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताओं की पूर्ति में समस्या उत्पन्न होती है बलराम एक नौ साल का बधिरांत बच्चा है वो एक प्री मैच्योर बच्चा है जिसका शारीरिक विकास उसकी आयु के अनुरूप नहीं हुआ था वो एक निम्न वर्गीय श्रेणी से संबंध रखता है तथा पांच साल से लगातार नेशनल एसोसिएशन फॉर ब्लाइंड दिल्ली के प्रशिक्षण कार्यक्रम से संलग्न है इन पांच सालों के अंतर्गत उसे रोजमर्रा के कामों में हलन चलन में उसकी शैक्षणिक जरूरतों के अनुसार संप्रेषण द्वारा प्रशिक्षण दिया गया है 
जिससे वो इन सब क्रियाओं में स्वावलंबी बन सके बलराम बिना किसी सहायता के चाकू से फलों को काट सकता है उनके छिलकों को कूड़ेदान में डाल सकता है अपने बर्तनों को खुद साफ कर सकता है उन्हें सही जगह पर रख सकता है सही बर्तनों का चयन करके खुद खाना खाता है एवं पानी की बोतल निकालकर पानी भी पीता है इन सभी क्रियाओं में वो टेक्चुअल साइन लैंग्वेज से निर्देशों को ग्रहण करता है और अपने भावों को व्यक्त करता है टेलर फ्रेम और ब्रेलर द्वारा गणित पठन लेखन में भी प्रशिक्षण प्राप्त कर रहा है सभी बच्चों की तरह उसका भी एक मनपसंद खेल है उसे सेलफोन को अपने कानों पर लगाकर उसका कंपन महसूस करना अच्छा लगता है कहा जाता है वॉकिंग विद अ फ्रेंड इन डार्क इज बेटर देन वॉकिंग अलोन इन लाइट कहने का तात्पर्य है कि वो लॉन्ग केन ट्रेवल टेक्टाइल पाथ ट्रेलिंग और लैंडमार्क्स द्वारा हलन चलन में भी सक्षम है और व्यायाम संबंधी क्रियाएं जैसे ट्रेडमिल स्टैटिक साइकिल का स्वचालन भी कर सकता है कहा गया है द बेस्ट एंड मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल थिंग्स इन द वर्ल्ड कैन नॉट बी सीन और इवन टच दे मस्ट बी फेल्ट विद द हार्ट Welcome back from the break. Before going on to the break, we were discussing about the different assessment patterns that we need to follow, like the different movements we need to see: the adduction, then the abduction, flexion, extension. Then we need to see the tolerance power. How much a person with amputation can bear the uh, weight of the prosthetics. so next what do we have in the assessment so now we will start one by one the different level of uh, the amputation in the prosthetic fitment so now we have uh, this four quarter amputation and shoulder disarticulation amputation now in this photograph on the left side is a four quarter amputation in this the entire shoulder is lost the shoulder from the shoulder girdle, girdle is lost and the right side that is shoulder disarticulation where the shoulder is there but there is no limb so uh, considering this uh, uh, for four quarter amputation the complete arm and the shoulder girdle is removed loss of weight bearing area present on shoulder disarticulation alignment stability and weight is very important no movement on amputated side may have active mobile tissue marks so we will go one by one for this the complete arm and the shoulder girdle is removed as i shown in the previous slide the entire shoulder and the arm was removed so there was nothing to suspend the prosthesis and the it important is the weight the weight bearing area is lost so it is very difficult to suspend the prosthesis on the patient's body and it 
takes some uh, strapping the you can say the trick is strapping to suspend the processes on patient's body and the alignment of the processes is very important because we don't use any shoulder jo um, joint in that and to restore the image to match with the normal side it is important to align the processes properly because in that in shoulder the four quarter amputation what happens the deviation of the processes from its place is occurs very often because because of this uh, chalte samay dhakka lag gaya kuch ho gaya then processes deviates from its uh, original position so being careful is also very important Point. Yeah, because it does not have sensation, and when you walk in a crowd, the other person get may get hurt, and the person will think you are normal person, and because from outside the patient looks normal. But it is important to take care of because it does not have sensation, so it does not give any feedback from outer world. So patient need to take care of that prosthesis. So in case like when. prosthetics is given then the size of the patient's arm or wherever the post prosthetics is given is taken and according to that the socket is made yes we we take the plaster cast we will explain in further slides we take the cast and then just duplicate the residual part and then over that we fabricate the prosthesis and if require we add certain uh, bulk to that prosthesis to match with the normal side so in case like when the proper size is taken then how does it move or How does it affect if it it's moved? Like this, अभी आपने बोला धक्का लग गया या कहीं चलते चलते चोट लग जाती है टकरा गए तो उस केस में कैसे फर्क पड़ जाएगा अगर मूव करता है? I mean uh, that is for four quarter because the entire weight bearing area there is no shoulder and it is resting on the chest of the I mean lateral side of the chest of the patient's body. So there is a very limited area which controls the prosthesis on the body. So it is almost free. So if a patient is walking and is not careful or in a crowd it may get deviated i mean shifted from its uh, position and in other processes it remains on the place because the we have the most of the structure of shoulder and limb uh, to uh, maintain the processes in position so like in case of where amputation is not providing any move uh, movement or it does not provide any function to the person then in, in that case only the cosmetic Yeah, in four quarter only we give only. I mean, it is recommended to give only the cosmetic processes because, the, if, as we saw in the slide, there is no movement because in the residual part there is no movement, and patient cannot uh, perform any movement from the processes by his own. So it is completely passive processes. By his normal side, he can move the processes, position it, and he can use for the cosmetic purpose. like that uh, four quarter processes has a socket and shoulder joint which patient can move in various degree various angle various position lock it and then it has a elbow joint which patient normally by his normal hand he can move the position of the elbow joint and same uh, for the wrist so he can maintain the position or position the processes for his activity or the work L and in cosmetic it is general i mean only for the appearance like patient has is going to temple or in a some puja or something so he can position the prosthesis in a position so that he can uh, sit or stand in this position or particular uh, position he wants so what more do we have in four four quarter amputation in that the uh, active mobile tissue mass is very important because the active tissues uh, are important because when we suspend the prosthesis and tissues are not mobile and it is adherent to the body so it creates lot of pain because of the friction and the shear force from the prosthesis it creates pain and if the pain is the patient is patient will not use the prosthesis it will restrict the movement from that part movement because in four quarter there is no such movement between the socket and the patient's body so because of general uh, use of the processes there is certain pressure or friction with between socket and the patient's body if the tissue or the, the skin is very uh, sensitive or the scar i mean after operation the scar is adherent it is not mobile and the uh, mass bulk i mean it is not there then it is very painful for the patient to use the processes So, in case like sir, if we have like one third of the below elbow is amputated, mm -hmm. so if a prosthetics is given, then in case that uh, whole one third is covered or some part of it is covered. Uh, in the case of prosthetics, so we cover the 
proximal joint of the uh, limb. If suppose the amputation is through the wrist, we cover the entire wrist joint for the prosthesis and if it is below the elbow, we cover the elbow joint and if it is below the, uh, above the elbow and below shoulder, we cover the shoulder joint. So, the proximal joint, I mean the next joint uh, to that part we cover for the better function and stability. So, what are the different prescription ideas? And prescription idea for the fore quarter and uh, through shoulder amputation is uh, the restoring body image is very important for fore quarter and uh, through shoulder because in fore quarter the image of I mean the body is distorted. Uh, it is one side entire limb is there and another side it, there is nothing. So, once patient put on a shirt, it looks very awkward from outside. So, maintaining the posture, I mean maintaining the body image, it is very important to ma make body symmetrical. So, we just copy the left side and duplicate it on the right side in case of uh, right side amputation. And the second point is uh, shoulder cup. Shoulder cup allows cloth to hang properly, protect sensitive skin. We provide a shoulder cup which uh, protect the skin and support the cloth to hang properly on the shoulder. Cosmetic prosthesis is uh, the best choice for the four quarter amputation and the generally endoskeletal with manual operated elbow lock and passive hand. Just I, uh, just now I explained you the prosthesis with the uh, passive hand, there, there will not be any movement in the hand with his own normal hand, pa uh, patient can move the fingers, position it, he can move, position the hand, position the elbow and the shoulder joint for various uh, activity, static activity, it is not dynamic processes. Uh, again for body power processes, it may be uh, controlled, but require large input to from the clinical team. Because of the loss of major joints of the upper extremity, it is required to uh, for various professional uh, in a rehabilitation team to get the person to his normal life. Like uh, as a prosthetist, we fit a prosthesis and then uh, it is important to have a training for that uh, with the prosthesis. So, we refer the pro uh, person, a patient to the occupational therapist, they train the patient for various activity which he can perform with the prosthesis. And after training, uh, patient has to practice that uh, those uh, whatever is taught during the training and after practice, he can perform the various activities. So, overall it takes a uh, lo very long time, ar around 3 to 6 months to get back the maximum output from the processes. Like many points have to be taken care of while assessing, while prescribing a prosthetics and even providing prosthetics is not the end of the providing a functional purpose, but therapies are also should be given. Exactly, when, because when we patient is fitted with the prosthesis, what happens? We fit processes uh, according to the current status of the patient, but after he start using the prosthesis, there are lot of changes take place. Uh, improvement is in his uh, muscle power improvement and the reduction in the volume of the residual limb. So, ac according to that, uh, in in the follow up, we see what are the changes uh, occurring in the patient and f according to that, we do the changes in the processes. So, like if socket is becoming loose because of a reduction in the uh, body weight or a reduction in the swelling of the stump. So, we make it little bit tight and because of gain of the uh, muscle power, if he is over using the, if he is using and uh, using for more function. So, we adjust the processes to op to the optimized level, so that he get uh, maximum from the process, maximum output from the processes. So, like it says external power is also possible. So, what does external power exactly signify to? External power is uh, that two type, body power is, first I will explain body power, in that we use uh, different type of straps to get the function from the processes like uh, flexion and extension of elbow, opening and closing of hand and the shoulder movement. And in external power, there is there are uh, certain uh, electrodes placed on the uh, muscle belly of the patient and that electrodes says the uh, EMG from the given to the muscle and that EMG is transferred to the mechanical energy through the battery and the microprocessor and through that we have uh, electric hand that functions, electric hand or elbow, whatever 
is the case so that functions from the battery so in that case patient does not have to put his body weight body power to operate the processes but by simply giving a signal to the uh, processes he use the uh, function of the processes now socket design there are different design for the both uh, four quarter and uh, shoulder disarticulation first is important is the laminated socket it is sturdy and strong and laminated socket with the extension for four quarter because the entire body uh, the section is lost so we need to extend it to match with the normal side so we add bulk to the amputated side to match it with the normal side and then narrow, narrow ap uh, socket and the ap is anterior posterior so and bo body jacket body jacket which is shown in the picture here and frame version of is also available for above elbows processes so for four quarter processes absence of uh, absence of complete shoulder girdle no movement on the amputated side so there is no movement because there is no part of body lack of bo weight bearing area there is no weight bearing area for the processes processes it is difficult to uh, suspend on the shoulder uh, person's patient's body and the loss of body contour because contour is uh, distorted because of the loss of uh, entire shoulder girdle shoulder cap and the cosmetic prosthesis is the preferred choice for the four quarter amputation and the functional prosthesis control is very difficult in four quarter ampu amputation and sound side positioning is important it is important to match with uh, the sound side in conclusion for the four quarter and shoulder disarticulation is due to restricted residual body movement high weight of the processes most most patient will find the functional processes a testing challenge uh, to master it is very difficult to use the processes uh, in case of four, four quarter i mean functional processes in case of four quarter because it will require require lot of motivation from the patient side and then a lot of effort from the patient side we can fit the processes uh, to the optimum for the optimum function a therapist can train the patient for uh, use the processes for the optimum requirement but uh, ultimately it comes to the patient because uh, he has to practice and he has to use the processes to his day to day life and it is very difficult in four quarter and shoulder disarticulation to use a functional prosthesis just applying a prosthetics is not the ultimate rehab to it not rehab because it restores only body image not the function of the limb and a uh, therapy proper therapy and proper exercise is also required after the applying of prosthetic after uh, applying the processes therapy uh, is not such required only the training is required after because before uh, fitment of processes we refer uh, if required we refer the patient to the therapist to get certain uh, exercises done and after fitment we ref uh, refer to the professional who train the patient to use the prosthesis for maximum use so what are the different other uses for the prosthetics and in uh, cosmetic processes patient can use a cosmetic prosthesis for uh, his uh, day to day life for a general purpose like if he has a free passive uh, hand he can position it into such a way that he can use for example writing we use one hand to uh, hold the paper or uh, fix the paper and then another hand we write so patient can hold with a passive hand position for uh, to keep it on a table and then fill with normal hand he can write or he can use the processes for support like if he is holding something a plate or something so he can support the uh, plate from uh, below the plate and he can use the processes in that way also in that uh, in for four quarter and shoulder he does not need uh, to have the functional processes to use for day to day life now uh, we will discuss about the measurements and the casting of, uh, of the four quarter amputation this is the four quarter amputation we first take the entire measurements of the normal side and the shoulder and then we trace the outer uh, outer border of the body to match with the amputated side so tracing is important because we have to match uh, it match amputated side with the pro, uh, normal side then uh, for casting we use double layer of stock net which is important because once we take cast and remove the cast uh, patient does not get exposed to the environment 
and plaster of Paris bandage is used uh, for slab casting. We cover the entire uh, extremity, entire area with the plaster of Paris just to get the duplicate of the body image. And certain area required to give pressure, the weight bearing area, the weight tolerant area, we give pressure to suspend for the suspension of the processes and to take weight during the function of the processes. Then the cast is removed from the body and after removal of the cast, we uh, get a and make a trial socket for the patient. And this is a frame type of uh, socket which uh, we make for a four quarter amputee or shoulder disarticulation. It is a very effective type socket because it stays on the bo patient body and it allows the volume changes. For example, if patient gains weight or uh, reduce weight, so it accommodates uh, the changes in the patient's uh, volume, body volume. Same in case of a child, if, if a small child is there, the small child will grow yes, according so to age. Yes, that so case it is uh, this type for four quarter and the shoulder disarticulation, we give such socket for the, I mean preferred socket design for the four quarter and uh, shoulder disarticulation, especially in the case of uh, children, it is very important. In, in side view, you can see that it is narrow, I mean anterior posterior area is very narrow, it is compressed from the anterior posterior, so it stays and does not move on the body, patient's body. Wedge between the angle of chest and back provides suspension. Suspension is good when user gains or loses weight and the final socket must be stiff to resist the bending moments. So it is important to have stiff socket when we finalize the socket, especially where we fix the joints and the uh, bar of the prosthesis. Now we test the prosthesis up. In trial socket, we test the prosthesis uh, on the patient. We pull it down and do certain movements to check whether prosthesis stays on place or it uh, shift from this uh, position. In flexion, this position is flexed, uh, shoulder position. So we test the processes and socket fitting whether it stays on a body or deviates. And this is a, a trial prosthesis fitted on a frame type of socket. Patient, uh, we give some basic training with during the trial session itself. So when we finalize the processes at that time, patient is uh, uh, patient has some knowledge of use of the processes and after going home, I mean taking the processes home, he can use it uh, and master in the uh, use of the processes. Now in previous slide, there is, uh, you see the arm portion is uh, uncovered and the endoskeletal type of processes, the upper portion is endoskeletal and the lower portion is exoskeletal. The, you can see the difference between the endo and exoskeletal. And up, now we covered the upper portion with the cosmetic foam, so it looks like uh, arm when the once the clothing is done, it doesn't uh, give impression of uh, patient using the artificial. Are, the, it resembles the muscles, muscles of, of the body. Some patient, I mean the athletic or the uh, patient who does exercise, they require some time to show their muscle mass on the amputated, I mean, prosthetic uh, shell to uh, match with their normal side because they certain um, few. Pros, uh, patient, they, they are very uh, particular about their look. So they want their muscle to be seen in the prosthetic side as well. Now the components of a shoulder disarticulation and four quarter prosthesis, the manual locking elbow, elbow is an important joint because it gives the movement for arm and forearm, it compensates the both movements. An electric locking elbow is a optional that is not uh, uh, preferred in the uh, four quarter amputation. Electric flexion am elbow, the electric uh, equipments are very expensive and general, uh, I mean population of uh, amputee does not afford uh, this type. So these are normally, we, uh, we do not prescribe the electric uh, prosthesis to common, common patient. Then foam cosmetic as, as shown in the previous slide, the cosmetic to cover the uh, endoskeletal part of the prosthesis. And uh, in previous slide, I will show this is different type of hook. If you will see the terminal device or at the end of the prosthesis, it a patient has a different uh, type of uh, terminal device. Terminal is the end, uh, this is a substitute for the hand. So the patient's requirement is to use for a heavy work or heavy duty uh, prosthesis. Uh, 
was the his demand. So we use such processes. So he used the uh, terminal device for uh, heavy duty work or the hard work. So these four quarter the as earlier you've seen uh, shown us, these work as our mind works or it requires an external force to make it work. The passive, the patient has to do his own, he patient has to control the passive processes by his normal side and the electric processes, the myoelectric processes, the muscle signal when person give any signal like for mo making this movement, my brain is giving some signal to the muscle. So that signal is picked from the uh, muscle by the electrode and that uh, signal is processed through the microprocessor and then through the battery and the electric and the uh, function is generated. So it is actually the not the brain signal, not the nerves, but the signal from the muscle, the processes used for the function of the processes. Okay, so like if uh, if I want to pick some something, if I want to pick a pen from a table, so the hand, the prosthetic hand will move on its own or? No, not entire processes, the only, uh, the myoelectric controls the elbow joint and the uh, hand. So patient has to make a movement with the straps. Again, in that case, we will have to make a hybrid. So patient will move his shoulder with his own because in case of uh, above elbow processes and then the elbow joint, he can move with the uh, signal, I mean electrically and the hand, he can uh, use the electric power and the my myoelectric signal to operate. So by that he can use I mean, shoulder joint he will do his own and other part he will do uh, my electrically. Okay, so like whatever the prosthetic is made up of, the, the components which it is made, made up of, it, it does it depend from prosthetic to prosthetic or is it same for uh, all the? No, there are so various type of components uh, used for the prosthetics. So uh, as I said earlier, it is important to select a component for a patient according to their motivation and their uh, functional requirement. So, and uh, again in India we have one more criteria of uh, uh, budget or the finance. So uh, we look at the patient's pocket also what, how much he can spend on the processes and how much, uh, uh, how much he is going to gain from the processes. If the gain is less uh, uh, with compared to the cost, so we do not recommend such type of processes for a normal person. So we give mechanical or normal uh, uh, aesthetic processes. So till now we were discussing about what are the different types of processes used in prescribing a prosthetic, the four, four quarter prosthetic. We will continue our discussion after a short break. ऑटिज्म एक व्यापक विकासात्मक विकलांगता है जिसके लक्षण जीवन के प्रथम तीन वर्ष में ही दिखाई पड़ते हैं जैसे असंगत खेल असमान स्थूल एवं सूक्ष्म गामक क्रियाएं शाब्दिक संकेतों पर अभिव्यक्ति न देना देखो ओपन ओपन करो ओपन 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 करके नियमित कार्यक्रम परिवर्तन का विरोध करना एवं अवलोकनीय शारीरिक उच्च स्तरीय या निम्न स्तरीय क्रियाकलाप यू एन सी आर पी डी टू थाउजेंड सेवन सेक्शन वन ऑफ आर्टिकल फोर निशक्तता के क्षेत्र में कार्यरत प्रोफेशनल के प्रशिक्षण पर महत्व देता है ऑटिज्म के क्षेत्र में सरकारी एवं गैर सरकारी संस्थाएं कार्यरत हैं जो भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद द्वारा पंजीकृत हैं Society for Advanced Study in Rehabilitation एक ऐसी ही गैर सरकारी संस्था है कनिष्क तेरह साल का एक ऑटिस्टिक बच्चा है जो इसी संस्था से प्रशिक्षण प्राप्त कर रहा है असंगत क्रियाएं कार्यकलापों में निरस्ता असमान स्थूल एवं सूक्ष्म गामक क्रियाएं जैसे बॉडी रॉकिंग और फिंगर रिगलिंग उसमें देखी जा सकती है उसे मैचिंग और पेस्टिंग पॉइंटिंग जैसी क्रियाएं सिखाई जाती हैं। 
ग्लास फिर से ग्लास ग्लास वेरी कप को टच करो जल्दी से कप को वेरी द कप वेरी गुड कप में क्या करता है कनीस टी पीता है चलो ग्लास फिर इज द ग्लास वेरी गुड चलो बाउल की तरह बाउल बाउल जल्दी से टच करो बाउल को वेरी गुड बाउल में क्या करता है कनीस तथा साथ ही साथ रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताएं जैसे खाना पीना कपड़े पहनना और व्यायाम संबंधी प्रशिक्षण दिया जाता है ऑटिस्टिक बच्चों को भिन्न भिन्न प्रकार की कार्यविधियां उनके स्तर के अनुसार सिखाई जाती हैं जैसे कुछ बच्चों के लिए कलरिंग विद इन वन एरिया मैचिंग एंड आइडेंटिफिकेशन फाइन मोटर स्किल्स आई हैंड कोऑर्डिनेशन कंसेप्ट ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स फ्रूट्स बॉडी पार्ट्स कलर्स पर जोर दिया जाता है तथा कुछ को प्रश्न पढ़ के उत्तर देने में और रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताओं को पूरा करने में सक्षम बनाया जाता है इसके अलावा राइम्स डांसिंग सिंगिंग द्वारा लेजर एंड रिक्रिएशनल एक्टिविटीज में भाग लेने के लिए प्रोत्साहित किया जाता है इन सभी कार्यकलापों एवं प्रशिक्षण का एकमात्र उद्देश्य उन्हें स्वनिर्भर बनाना है ताकि ये डगमगाते पाओ सक्षम बन जीवन के एक एक पायदान पर दृढ़ता से आगे बढ़े और अपनी मंजिल को पाले एक तारा टिमटिमाता उसने आकाश को छू लिया एक लौ जली कहीं उसने अंधकार को मिटा दिया Welcome back after the break. Before going on to the break, we were discussing about the different processes in which a four-quarter prosthetic is made. Now we'll further continue our discussion with the shoulder and four four-quarter prosthetics. So, what next do we have? We are going to discuss now the components and the component selection for the processes for four-quarter amputation and the shoulder disarticulation amputation. So here we have a. Uh, Shoulder joint components fixed. Extra stability for operation of elbow and terminal device. Chosen for simplicity, weight, and the complexity reduction. One less joint or uh, to consider and uh, stabilize to it motion to uh, occur in a separate position. Requires auxiliary space for clothing. Alignment is very important. So. we need extra stability of the from the component if a joint is missing so uh, to replace that joint we uh, it is important to stabilize for the shoulder we stabilize that joint to get function from the other lower joints of the that processes and for the stabilization is important because if the process is not stable it it becomes very difficult for a patient to use the processes and the second thing is space uh, between the socket and the body it is important for clothing because once patient is uh, using a prosthesis and he is doing his uh, task independently he needs some space and assistance to uh, put on the clothes so and there is space required to for in axillary reason to accommodate the axillary part of the clothing so like in case of these uh, prosthetics if we see we have velcros also present in the strap these straps if there the velcros present or are they attached to the body in prosthesis we make few straps are fixed so patient cannot alter or change the length of or the fitting of the that strap and we give few adjustable straps so that in adjustable straps we give the velcro so that if required patient can make it little bit tighter 
I will little bit uh, loose on the body as for his uh, comfort or requirement. For example, if patient wants to put on a shirt and uh, it is difficult for him to do that in a tight processes position. So, he will make a strap little bit loose and he will put on the shirt and after that he, uh, he will just tighten the strap with the velcro closer and he can function the processes. So, any deformity in this velcro or the strap might also affect the prosthetics? We recommend to change these uh, straps uh, uh, in a 6 to 8 months time because the normal life of the velcro strap is 6 to 8 months. So, it is recommended to change it uh, periodically otherwise uh, uh, accidentally the processes may come out or it may not to function properly, uh, the malfunction may occur in that case. So, like simplicity and is more seen in this case and there are less of weight so it makes it more easier for the patient to carry it. Because uh, once patient does not feel it is his own body weight, but uh, something is added to his body, patient feel it heavy. The same thing happens here also, the patient's uh, arm is more uh, in weight than the prosthesis, but the, when the prosthesis is applied, patient feel it, sometimes feel the prosthesis heavy. So, because it is not part of their body. So, we try to make prosthesis as lighter as possible, but still we keep some weight of the processes because what happens? Patient's body uh, get uh, deviated. It may get some secondary deformities because of uh, imbalance of the upper extremity. In case a patient is uh, patient lost his uh, arm, so th there is, there are chances of getting spinal scoliosis on the uh, normal side. Patient may get uh, bend on the normal side because because of the processes. Uh, I mean because of the normal limb that side and nothing to balance on uh, affected side. This is to remind our viewers that they can contact us at our toll free number 1800 our phone number 265 our fax number 265 for any queries or for any information if they want to share with us regarding the topic. So, sir, what are the different limitations that a person might suffer? Limitations uh, as far as uh, the shoulder decide or uh, this four quarter amputation, the patient, the movement is very difficult from the shoulder. Patient can move his elbow and the wrist, but he cannot move the shoulder joint with the strapping. So, uh, in four quarter, it is very difficult to get the, all the movement of the uh, prosthesis. We need to fix it in a certain position and we limit the movement of the uh, joint so that patient does not get uh, disturbed because of unwanted movements sometimes which occur in the prosthesis. Now, we will discuss the various component of the uh, prosthesis. In that sense, we will discuss about the shoulder joint components. There are two type of uh, various type of we will consider uh, talk about two type of uh, the shoulder joint. One is the ball and socket joint which has the two axis of friction which we can uh, adjust uh, friction for the patient uh, individual patient. So, that uh, according to his requirement whether he can move the prosthesis slowly with some friction, high friction or he can make it loose and uh, move the prosthesis with, uh, without a friction when patient need a, a periodical movement of the prosthesis. And the second is a, a stirrup type which we fix to the socket and it has a, a, a screw which we fit and tighten at the time of fitment so that patient does not uh, do uh, movement of the that particular joint and it remains in the particular position. And like in case of endoskeleton if we talk about, then endoskeleton is considered to be the internal prosthetics if we say it in a layman term, then what are the kind of friction that an endoskeleton might cause? Because exoskeleton is something you are attaching to the body part, but endoskeleton where is the friction? That is done at the point of where we join uh, join the uh, socket from the lower section. So there is a joint hinge type of joint which we control. I mean, we, there is a knob which we can turn to increase or decrease the friction so that patient can use in a particular uh, set friction for uh, in the prosthesis. And at every joint, every level on every joint, we have a friction control uh, unit so that we control the friction according to patient's requirement and the, his comfort. And these are some of the electronics, if we say. 
these are uh, yes uh, frame socket with the electric hand on the left side you can see the internal structure of the electric hand on right side that is covered with the glove which looks uh, almost normal to the uh, uh, human limb once the patient is uh, done the clothing over it so it looks uh, the exposed part looks normal to the patient's uh, natural limb then shoulder joint component for locking we lock the shoulder joint for in uh, various uh, processes like earlier was the friction there was a set friction for a uh, movement but in this patient can make the joint free and move the processes in a particular position and then lock it in desired angle or the position for a particular task or particular position so are they more of costly as yeah, compared the, to the other ones the previous yeah it is more costly than the friction type because it gives them extra function it's uh, simple in posture you get more function you pay more uh, the the similarly the uh, this uh, lock type of knee, uh, elbow joint is more costly than the uh, friction type of elbow joint and these are more complex to handle also or they're just more easy as compared to the simple ones once the fitment is done these components like uh, uh, shown in the slide is these are not shown uh, seen to the patient so it, these are covered with the foam covering so it remains inside so it is very simple we just uh, uh, show where the lock uh, knob is there so patient use only that particular point does not use entire joint or does not uh, alter the joint or do any changes it just use the particular knob to op operate the joint and the function of the processes and these are they available easily can a normal person access them easily the availability of uh, prosthesis and the prosthetic joint it varies uh, place to place because in the mostly in the metros or the urban cities it is very uh, easily available but in remote area or the uh, small towns it is very difficult to get so still there uh, the prosthetists or the professional are using the old type of uh, prosthesis to rehabilitate the upper limb amputee so what does harnessing Mean. Harnessing is a, a technical term for the strapping. Uh, we can say the strapping of the prosthesis to for a suspension and for uh, getting function from the prosthesis. So harnessing is important for suspension and operation of the prosthesis, and it requires a lot of adjustment and follow up to get proper uh, positioning of uh, harnessing and pro proper uh, adjustment of the harness. And like, uh, does it does it? does not create any impression on the body like these straps are used they generally create an impression or irritation is caused due to no it. straps are normally a uh, cotton strap so it is not a uh, uh, irritant and it is uh, compatible with the human's body and it is very thin strap so it does uh, it does not appear from the outside uh, clothing so uh, from outside it these are not seen so it remains within the clothes and uh, suspend the processes no harnessing we can see there are various type of uh, uh, harnessing and for shoulder disarticulation the, as the level of amputation is high the more harnessing is required and as we go down for a lower level of amputation the harnessing reduces accordingly so in this uh, shoulder disarticulation process you can see there are lot of straps uh, at uh, in front of chest and back side chest and at waist also there is a strap to control the processes uh, prosthetic function and the to hold the prosthesis in proper position we will discuss about the body powered control uh, with uh, harness shoulder girdle and trunk movement mobility for dual control for use dual control is uh, control of uh, elbow joint and control of hand in the humeral section if present cannot control prosthesis but may trigger switch biscapular abduction El for elbow and the terminal device uh, it is important and the chest expansion for uh, locking the elbow lock so like uh, using a, a function of a prosthesis patient need to do uh, certain uh, tricky movements uh, that is a, a sequential movement and uh, coordinated 
and patient has to see visually what movement he is doing and what uh, action is getting from the processes. Like for opening a processes, patient required the biscapular abduction, like uh, abducting bo both the scapula or stabilizing one and abducting one. So the strap uh, get pulled, the posterior strap get pulled and hand opens for a particular uh, purpose. And as he releases the uh, shoulder, the hand get closed. And similarly, for the flexion of the elbow joint, he need to do the flexion uh, of for his arm. So as he flex his arm, the strap get pulled from the inner si side of the uh, prosthesis and that pulls the arm up. So the he get patient get the flexion of the elbow joint, and for locking of the elbow joint, like after uh, making taking the position of the elbow joint, he need to lock the elbow joint in that position to perform a particular task. So he need to do a tricky movement like uh, shoulder rotation with uh, stretching. So he does that movement and the, that locks the prosthesis in position, and after then again he need to uh, stress the strap which controls the hand to open the hand. Okay, like so in case. Where, as we can see, the straps are present on the chest area. So, doesn't it restrict the respiratory movements? No, it does not because the straps are not covering uh, uh, vital part. I mean, maximum part of the uh, chest. It is uh, only covering particular portion of our chest. So, and it is again mobile. It's not uh, restricting the chest movement, but stabilizing the prosthesis. So that does not. Uh, stop the breathing or any other function of the body. Okay. So, these are basically to support the prosthetics that are present. Yes. And as we discussed earlier, like uh, uh, for a patient having very less movement in the particular section or particular residual part of the body, we use different type of uh, uh, amplifier of uh, uh, movement, I mean okay. excursion, because uh, when patient moves his body, there is an excursion occur on the cable and that moves the uh, component. But if the movement is less, patient is not able to generate uh, the movement as required to open the uh, or operate the processes. We use a certain type of uh, amplifier which uh, increases the effectiveness of the pull which the patient is generating. So like uh, in the figure uh, on uh, right upper one, if you will see the patient we give bar type of uh, amplifier, which uh, after pulling, uh, in talking about in a, in a centimeter, if patient pulls in one centimeter at this point, patient get uh, just double movement from the uh, double pull on the uh, functional cable. So we get maximum movement from that uh, particular joint or the portion he is using. And in case where if there is any injury being uh, has been developed due to some impression or something, does not that increase more risk for it? If patient has a uh, injury in his residual limb, it is uh, uh, recommended patient does not use prosthesis if that, uh, that part is uh, giving any friction or any uh, pressure at that particular point because uh, if the patient is getting continuously pressure on that injured part, the wound will not heal and that again there are chances of infection because of the closed environment of the socket and the residual arm. So it is uh, advised to get the uh, wound healed and after that use the prosthesis. And what are these internal and external mounting? Mounting, what does it mean by that? Mounting of uh, mounting basically is a placement of the strap and the uh, uh, cable. So how we place the cable and strap over the uh, prosthetic uh, uh, prosthetic component is uh, important. Like if that should not affect the other movement of other uh, joints or the uh, part, and that uh, it it should not be seen from outside the cloth. That is important. So uh, according to that we place the uh, uh, straps and the uh, amplifiers on the pr uh, prosthetic socket. Like uh, if this is only about the shoulder part right? and if there is a prosthetic being required uh, in the elbow area or below the elbow area, do we say use the same strap system or 
No, as I said, uh, as we go the lower level of amputation, the strapping get reduced. Uh, higher the level of amputation, more strapping is required to stabilize and the get the function. And lower the level of the amputation, the less straps are required to uh, stabilize and the get function from the prosthesis. Yes, so, what more do we have to discuss? Now, uh, we will uh, talk about the above elbow prosth uh, prosthesis and the uh, casting procedure of uh, above elbow prosthesis. We just we cover with the stocking at the residual part of the uh, body and then use a plaster of Paris bandage to take negative cast of the that portion. And then trim lines, uh, I mean the trim lines are important uh, uh, for the function of the prosthesis. If the trim lines are low, the more mobility patient get from the prosthesis and the trim lines, I mean the edges uh, or the portion where we cut the upper edges where we cut the socket from is uh, higher than the patient get less uh, movement from the prosthesis. So, these trim lines are very necessary part of the prosthetics. These, these are very because that limits the movement of the particular joint and the, pro, uh, the prosthesis. The measurements is important to match the socket uh, with the residual part of the uh, body and we take uh, measurement 1 inch for, uh, interval from the uh, uppermost uh, area of the stump. So, where, where does this in, uh, start from the measurement, where is it taken from? We uh, decide the certain landmarks on the body uh, like uh, in case of below elbow we see the bony prominences and then mark the prominences and then from that bony prominences we measure uh, on the interval of uh, 1 inch or uh, 2 centimeters whatever uh, the scale person is using and then we take a negative cast. So, after ne taking negative cast we fill it with the plas plaster uh, match the measure measurements which we have taken and then make a socket for uh, patient. Okay. And it is important we take uh, anterior posterior measurement the width of anterior posterior and then circumference of uh, the residual limb. So, in case this uh, what are these tubes these are used for the uh, measurement purpose? That is yeah it is being used for a measurement purpose measurement of the shoulder width of the shoulder joint we are t using that to that is caliper which we call. Casting is a big part of the prosthetic. Prosthetic fitment, uh, casting is very important big part of uh, prosthetic fitment you, because the, if the socket does not fit, so the patient cannot use the prosthesis and for making good socket, the good cast and the nice modification in the cast is required. So, we will discuss about the casting. In casting good impression of axilla is required and the good medial lateral wrap we wrap the plaster of Paris uh, on a arm or residual limb, then uh, start your circumferential wrap, we wrap entire entire stump or entire residual of the body and enclose the whole of the residual uh, limb plus the anterior posterior wings. Then we give pressure on this uh, anterior and posterior of the shoulder to make it as close as possible to the uh, patient's body. So, that it controls the rotation of the processes, medial or lateral rotation of the processes. Otherwise, if there is a gap or if the anterior posterior of the uh, socket is loose, then it will allow certain rotation uh, at the time of uh, prost prosthetic use. So, that makes patient very uncomfortable and the control uh, of the prosthesis is lost in that case. So, what is this casting made up of? What, what is the cast? Cast we use a plaster of Paris, normal plaster of Paris bandage and we just wrap on the residual part of the patient's body and after in few minutes uh, the plaster of Paris bandage get uh, set, it becomes hard and after it, when it become hard we take it out and uh, fill it with the plaster of Paris and get a positive cast. So, what are the common co uh, cast faults that we can see in daily life? Oh, uh, taking cast in abduction and then uh, over adducted an elevated shoulder in humeral flexion these are the flaw in case of the patient a person is taking class cast in abducted position then when the prosthesis is alignment aligned the uh, pro professional can see the gap over the shoulder and if it is over adducted 
it uh, professional can see when the socket is in the professional will find the gap at the area of axilla in flexion and extension the same uh, the uh, socket will be loose from the anterior or posterior side so these are to be very taken much care of while making a cast and while applying it in the prosthetic exactly when we uh, take a cast we uh, draw a trim line from uh, which uh, part we are going to trim the socket and according to that, that uh, trim line marking comes uh, uh, transfer on the cast and then we uh, at the time of modification according to the marking we modify the cast and make the socket for the processes so what does this figure tell us this figure uh, here it it shows the trim line of a socket like uh, this is the shoulder part of the uh, uh, amputee and uh, this is above elbow case and in that uh, this is a so dynamic socket design so trim line is kept uh, below the shoulder and uh, it is covering anterior and posterior part of the uh, uh, shoulder so it prevents the rotation but uh, allows the maximum abduction of the uh, uh, shoulder joint you can see the patient uh, during the trial phase uh, professional is adjusting the straps of the prosthesis and uh, training the patient for the use of the prosthesis and when cast is setting check you uh, you are well into the axilla because axilla, uh, it is important to have contact at axilla point it gives the good pr proprioception to the patient hold the anterior and posterior wing uh, tight into the good position so that uh, it uh, prevents the rotation of the socket and good fit uh, in the delta pectoral groove that is the uh, that is uh, at anterior part of the shoulder so uh, it controls and give good control for the use of the prosthesis now in this uh, uh, so you can see the cast uh, casting of uh, a elbow patient the shoulder i mean the upper uh, arm is wrapped with the plaster of paris and the shoulder is covered with the plaster so we are getting a good impression uh, of uh, his uh, shoulder and arm so du just duplicate of his uh, uh, amputated side we modify uh, for a pressure uh, tolerant and sensitive area and then make a socket after taking a cast we fill it with the plaster of paris we just uh, make some uh, 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 brim stronger of the that processes we draw the trim uh, trim lines inside the socket and we position uh, align a uh, little bit alignment of the socket we do at the time of after taking the cast and then we fill it uh, uh, with the plaster of paris to get a positive mold the it is uh, the position of the cast is maintained while the uh, pouring the plaster of paris so that to, uh, at the time of fabrication it does not uh, create uh, any uh, trouble to the for fabrication now we'll discuss uh, about uh, above elbow body powered prosthesis so what does this term body powered means body powered is uh, patient is using his own body power to operate the prosthesis like i told certain movements which patient make to use the prosthesis uh, because of that to use of a body uh, use of body movement and power of his own body it is called body powered prosthesis because there is no internal power, power in the prosthesis which can be used for the function so of uh, before going on to the break i would just like to summarize that we were discussing about the shoulder prosthetics how there are different types of shoulder prosthetics some are simple some are complex and how they their cost also vary according to them and their casting how they are been made and how the it is made so as to look so very similar to the other limb we'll continue our discussion for the uh, below elbow prosthetics after a short break
the state of knowledge exist the will the capacity and method are usually the problem मानसिक मंदता एक ऐसी विकलांगता है जो 18 वर्ष की आयु से पूर्व कभी भी हो सकती है जिसमें व्यवहार अनुकूलता में कमी एवं बुद्धि क्षमता 70 प्रतिशत से कम होती है अलोन वी कैन डू सो लिटल टूगेदर वी कैन डू सो मच भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद द्वारा देश भर में पंजीकृत केंद्र इस बात को प्रमाणित करते हैं एन प्रादेशिक केंद्र नई दिल्ली एक ऐसा ही केंद्र है जहां छात्रों को प्रशिक्षण दिया जाता है जिसके उपरांत वे मंद बुद्धि बच्चों की सेवा में नियुक्त होते हैं क्लासरूम टीचिंग ग्रुप टीचिंग एवं भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद के नव शिखर चैनल पर प्रसारित टेलीकॉन्फ्रेंसिस द्वारा संबंधित विषयों पर विस्तार पूर्वक ज्ञान दिया जाता है मेडिकल ऑक्यूपेशनल थेरेपी फिजियोथेरेपी स्पीच थेरेपी साइकोलॉजी और स्पेशल एजुकेशन जैसे क्षेत्रों में छात्रों को प्रशिक्षित किया जाता है प्रयोगात्मक अनुभव एवं अभ्यास के लिए टीचर ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम के उपरांत छात्रों को मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के साथ कक्षाओं में नियुक्त किया जाता है और इंडिविजुअलाइज्ड एजुकेशन प्लान का भी आधार बनाया जाता है जिससे वे संपूर्ण शिक्षा एवं चिकित्सा शैली को समझ सकें इस पूरे प्रशिक्षण कार्यक्रम के दौरान विद्यार्थी जर्नल्स न्यूज लेटर्स पेरियाडिकल्स चार्ट मॉडल्स कंप्यूटर ट्रेनिंग एवं टेक्स्ट बुक्स का उपयोग कर सकते हैं कहते हैं कीप योर फेस टू द सनशाइन एंड यू कैन नॉट सी द शेडो इसी बात को ध्यान में रखते हुए विद्यार्थियों को सरकारी एवं गैर सरकारी संस्थाओं में नियुक्त किया जाता है जहां वे मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के लिए निरीक्षण प्रशिक्षण एवं अनुसंधान का दायित्व संभालते हैं और इसके पश्चात ये विद्यार्थी इस प्रशिक्षण का उपयोग मंद बुद्धि बच्चों के सामाजिक एवं शैक्षणिक उत्थान एवं विकास में करते हैं और एक लक्ष्य की ओर आगे बढ़ते हैं और फिर लक्ष्य कितना ही दूर हो फासला नजरों का धोखा भी तो हो सकता है वो मिले या ना मिले हाथ बढ़ाकर देखो हम होंगे काम में आप हम होंगे काम में आप हम होंगे काम में आप एक दिन ओ मन में है विश्वास पूरा है विश्वास हम होंगे काम में आप एक दिन वी शैल ओवर काम वी शैल ओवर काम वी शैल ओवर काम समे Deep in my heart, I do believe that 
shall overcome some day. We shall overcome some day. We shall overcome some day. Welcome back after the break. Before going on to the break, we were discussing about the different shoulder prosthetics. Now we continue our discussion with the above elbow prosthetics. So, to what is the above elbow prosthetics? For above elbow prosthetics, we need to consider certain points uh, which are from the uh, patient side, like what he can control, what can be controlled, how is power generated and the level of loss, whether the patient is congenital case or the uh, whether he is a traumatic, the special consideration in socket design for uh, for that particular patient and the, with the, uh, the age of the uh, patient and the function uh, function in education, social and reaction like a function, uh, how the educational status or IQ level of the patient and then the uh, social uh, activities of the patient. In that, uh, like what we uh, what can be body powered? So body powered uh, elbow we can use bo body power to control the elbow joint, and uh, hand we can use uh, with body power, and uh, shoulder which is very difficult to use with the body powered processes. Like in hand for adults uh, they can use the hand with the the body power, but it is very difficult for a ch child uh, amputee. Children, they do not use the body power because uh, it is a tricky movement and it takes uh, the patient get the pressure from the strap, it is difficult to use the body power in a child case. Grippers, grippers require more bo uh, force to op operate than the normal Cosmo functional hand. So, if the, we are going to prescribe a gripper, uh, gripper is a, str uh, uh, is a device which uh, allows to do hard work or the uh, job requires the heavy uh, force and the hand for a children it is uh, uh, it is very simple and uh, controlled very easily because the forces in the hand is very low with compared to the uh, adult hand and the elbow joint the flexion and extension of the elbow joint what are the advantage of body powered hand gripper and passive functions control dependent on effect and feedback like uh, hand uh, patient can use hand or gripper with the body part but the function is dependent from the visual feedback like uh, uh, in prosthesis patient does not have a sensation the prosthesis does, does not have a sensation like normal hand so the patient need to do a coordinated sequential movement to to operate the prosthesis and at the same time the visual feedback is required whether the his what movement he is doing is correct to uh, get the, do the task or whatever the function he is doing and according to uh, from that feedback he the whatever changes in the movement or the function require that patient uh, does but uh, the prosthesis lightweight and quick response so as the patient moves their body to operate the prosthesis uh, it responds immediately uh, but more it requires more effort to operate the prosthesis and the sequential movements are uh, important because for a particular uh, movement like for uh, opening a hand, uh, movement of a shoulder, movement of a uh, elbow is uh, required and a limited range of motion can uh, uh, d disturb or can limit the function of the prosthesis. Providing the power, biscapular abduction is important to open the terminal device on the or the prosthetic hand and uh, different, uh, differential body uh, motions like a motion at shoulder joint, motion at, uh, motion at uh, uh, scapula and uh, mo motion at elbow joint is important to get the function from the prosthesis and operation from a waist belt. Uh, in certain cases, uh, waist belt is required where the suspension is not possible from the upper limb. So, in that case, uh, tolerance, pr pressure tolerance at the waist is uh, also uh, important. Now, in this diagram, uh, uh, the diagram shows the how the muscle muscle work to get a particular function. At the uh, time of muscle contraction, when muscle contracts, uh, it pulls the uh, lower po portion of the joint to get the function. Like uh, if the bicep muscle is contracting, it is pulling from the uh, below just below the elbow joint to 
flex the elbow joint. The same uh, function is used in a prosthetics also. Uh, also. So, when uh, for that to patient need to move his uh, uh, shoulder joint, uh, he need to flex his shoulder joint so that the straps coming uh, uh, in between the arm and the body, it pulls the uh, elbow joint, uh, the arm up to get the flexion of the prosthesis. Socket design. Uh, socket design is important uh, because uh, we need to see in socket design uh, uh, whether the vertical loading patient can tolerate and the pressures uh, created by the socket or the prosthesis can be tolerated uh, by the patient. Like uh, in uh, above elbow prosthesis, when a prosthesis is loaded in elbow flexed position, uh, the, it gives the pressure at anterior uh, distal end like that is a uh, front lower end of the residual part and the posterior uh, po uh, means back upper portion of the shoulder joint. So, a patient should be able to tolerate and uh, should get used to that type of pressure when using a functional prosthesis. So, like if uh, there are livers also in our body, if we talk about the physics part, if we talk about there are livers like the fulcrum, the load is there. So. Are these livers also keep in my, kept in mind while making the prosthetics? Yes, it is uh, important while making a prosthesis because if the stump is short, I mean residual part is short, the patient will require more force to operate the prosthesis. And as uh, similar to as you said in physics, if the liver arm uh, is short in that case, but if the stump is longer, so patient require less effort to operate mm -hmm. the prosthesis because of the longer liver arm. Mm -hmm. And vertical loading when patient uh, in a normal uh, standing position is for holding some object. So, it creates some uh, vertical pressure at the uh, at uh, uh, axilla and uh, 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 shoulder upper most part of the shoulder joint. And when he is uh, compressing something or pressing something down the just opposite uh, at the distal end of the uh, stump and the axilla he get uh, reaction from the prosthesis and force from the prosthesis. So, that also we need to keep in mind while designing a socket for uh, above elbow prosthesis. Now, this is a photograph of a uh, uh, externally powered uh, above elbow prosthesis. In this we can see the various straps which control the prosthesis like uh, this straps from this strap from uh, back side this control the opening of the hand as well as the flexion of the elbow joint. This moves the flex uh, elbow and open and close the hand. And the other straps, these keep the prosthesis in a position. Suspension, uh, uh, source of power and motion, forces and distance multipliers. Like uh, as you said, if uh, positioning of a particular, uh, the hinges is very important. Like uh, in this case, if the positioning of particular stay or hanger is important. Like. Uh, in this case, if the hanger is not positioned properly, the effort generated by the you know, patient's body get wasted and get absorbed and the expected outcome does not uh, uh, achieved. More of power is utilized and less of output is uh, Output obtained. is gain obtained, exactly. So, the what else? Now, position and operation of the prosthesis in three dimension. The range of joint motion is important to see with the processes how much range is uh, achieving and uh, range of motion restricted by socket design. Uh, the socket design should be such that it should provide maximum uh, range of motion of the particular joint, the covering joint. Like in above elbow, the socket design should provide maximum, uh, maximum mo motion of the shoulder joint. So, the dynamic socket which is trimmed below the shoulder gives more abduction whereas the conventional socket which cover the shoulder joint does not allow because that the brim, the edge of the uh, socket uh, restrict the abduction movement. So, similarly, uh, we need to consider various type of uh, uh, socket uh, design for the processes. And in case of uh, these like range of motion if we talk about the socket they help or they can also help us in maintaining the structure of the body part of the upper limb also. Socket is we does socket does not change according to the structure of body, but we make socket according to the structure. So, it is important because if there is change in the body, so we need to change the socket. If suppose child is growing and the socket is becoming tight over the period of time, so we 
change the socket for a periodically for the child. But if suppose a healthy person uh, is getting fit with the prosthesis, and after some time he lose his weight, so socket will become uh, loose. So in that case also we need to do some alteration in the socket or change the socket for optimum fit. So these cable driven hands, what are these? In the, in the case, uh, cable driven hands are two types. One is a voluntary opening, and the second one is a voluntary cl closing type. And it comes in a ch child and adult size. Voluntary opening is a uh, uh, hand is uh, remains in closed position always, and the body part is used to open the hand, and the voluntary closing hand remains open uh, normally. So, body power is used to close the hand uh, and pick the object or do the task. But using a body power uh, or voluntarily closing hand is difficult because uh, to pick uh, certain thing, patient, uh, the amputee has to apply force uh, according to the um, object and it is very difficult to uh, apply force on a particular thing with the harness. Okay. So, uh, for holding a thing compliant, we need to see how, to, I mean in a training we need to see various type of uh, points like the compliance, the how the object is, how the geometry or structure of the object and uh, uh, how the patient is able to operate the system. So, uh, when using a prosthesis, if suppose it is triangular um, object, it is difficult to hold from the top because the, it will slip down uh, from the prosthesis. Easily. So, we need to train how to position the object and then pick it from the uh, its position. Now, these are photo uh, photographs of uh, just to show how it looks like. These are externally powered uh, voluntary opening type of hand. So, the, the cable in this hand is pulled to open the hand and the spring coil spring inside closes the hand to do the task. The same is uh, the same comes in child size the internal structure we can see the coil spring which uh, which is uh, uh, pre tensed. So, the hand remains in closing position and when we open the hand it is tensed, tensed further and close the hand when the cable is released. Now, these are various type of uh, uh, assisted devices or terminal devices uh, for the upper limb prosthesis. The, 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 these are the upper left, these are the functional terminal devices. These are mostly used for the common uh, work or the patient require uh, heavy duty or uh, hard work. And the similarly for different various purposes, various type of uh, hands are available and terminal devices can be used like a plier, gripper, clamp or hook uh, which can be used according to the person's requirement. Now, you can see the photo in the photograph, so various tasks being done by the amputee using upper limb prosthesis, they can drive, they can do all normal job uh, after the fitment, they can fly an airplane, drive a car or play in a child's case. Elbow uh, cable operated elbow, it is important to see the range of uh, flexion uh, in the elbow joint and then elbow unit with their it is a exoskeletal or endoskeletal and a lock of the elbow joint whether it is internal locking or external locking. So, considering this point and the function, uh, functional, functional ability of the patient we uh, select the component for the above elbow patient. Now, again the hybrid system it is a combination of both mechanical and uh, electric system. So, the elbow is uh, mechanical and the system is uh, uh, hand is uh, myoelectric. So, with a strap he can use the hand and with passively he can adjust the elbow joint. Okay. Now, this is the structure of uh, elbow joint outer for exoskeletal uh, elbow joint. It, it is a more or less uh, normal human uh, limb uh, shape and uh, after at the end of that uh, the terminal device hand is fixed and uh, cable control is attached at the level of elbow joint and the op functionally obtained from the processes. In case of uh, elbow disarticulation where the le length is uh, important because in elbow disarticulation the level of uh, residual limb is the same as the level of uh, elbow of normal side. So, when we fit a prosthesis it is difficult to fit a joint below the elbow because that will increase the length of uh, upper arm more it will become the upper arm length will become more than the normal side and it looks very awkward and the patient acceptance is very low for that. So, in that case we uh, uh, use external joints. So, we make a socket fix the external joints. So, that maintain the length of the elbow joint at the same of the normal side. These are photo photographs of uh, uh, above elbow patient 
in this patient has a uh, invaginations and scar at uh, anterior part of his sternum so according uh, considering the uh, scar and wound we have, I mean, it is important to make changes in the socket so you can see in this socket uh, the opening is made a hollow is made so that the that portion the sensitive portion does not get pressure uh, at the time of function of the prosthesis so again uh, explain uh, this is a chain of uh, using a prosthesis a uh, uh, human uh, prosthesis user uses uh, the prosthesis give commands to the prosthesis prosthesis then does the function or outcome position and then that function or that movement is observed by the uh, uh, prosthetist uh, sorry the patient and again he adjusts the prosthesis accordingly and uh, does the proper function of the prosthesis or this is does how the, the cable prosthetics work. this is for the cable prosthesis or any type of uh, uh, above, uh, upper extremity prosthesis Okay, so same is for other cases of the prosthetics also, or just for the upper limb? These are this like is this is same for the all type of processes because uh, the processes does not have sensation. So it is important w at the time of performing any task, it is important to see how the hand is functioning. With normal hand, you can just palpate, feel it, and do the work. But in prosthesis, there is no sensation. So we need to patient need to see how what is uh, the hand is doing and how he has to operate the hand for the particular function. So, it acts as a normal yeah. hand? It acts almost as a normal almost. hand, but the prosthetic hand has uh, only two function opening and closing that is very f uh, basic function of the normal hand. Okay. In this we can see the harnessing uh, of a below elbow prosthesis, as, as I told the, as the low, uh, level of amputation comes low, the harnessing reduces. So, in the conventional type, old type of socket design, the cross type of uh, or uh, figure of 8 harness is used and the new socket design Y type, this is now called Y type of uh, harness, the only one step for opening and closing and of the hand is used. And these are uh, few uh, devices made for the partial hand amputee, like a patient has thumb but uh, has lost all the digits. So, uh, prosthetists design a pro assistive device according to the uh, requirement and then patient can do the gripping of uh, with his hand or uh, picking up object with the type of assistive devices. Okay, so these are like uh, they help completely and a person can become independent to a certain limit. With after the after treatment uh, of a prosthesis person can do all uh, most of the activity of daily living and perform all the tasks he was uh, performing before uh, with the normal hand before the amputation. Okay. So, for today our topic was upper limb prosthetics and in that we discussed the different movements that are present at the upper limb, then we discussed about the different types of amputation present in the upper limb that is the below shoulder, above elbow, below elbow, then we discussed about the different assessment procedure that needs to be mentioned, the points that need to be taken care of while assessing a patient with amputation and we had different types of prosthetics that are the endoskeleton, exoskeleton and under, under these also we have different uh, prosthetics made for different purposes like some are for functional purpose, some are for cosmetic purpose like to develop a person's personality and to uh, make him adjust more into the society and some of them provide the both purposes such as the functional as well as the cosmetic purpose. Then in detail we discussed about the shoulder prosthetics or the four quarter uh, prosthetic where we discussed about how it is made, how the casting is done and how they are attached and how a person is trained to use them. Then we discussed about the elbow prosthetic, above elbow prosthetic, how they are casted, how they are made and how the impression of a person's other elbow is taken so as to make it look like the normal or as it was before. And at the end we understood how it is important uh, for a person to adjust socially and with the help of this prosthetic it makes it more easier for the person to perform his occupation and carry out his uh, acti acti activities of daily living. I would like to thank sir for thank taking out their precious time and all sharing uh, their knowledge. With that we come to the end of our today's discussion. I hope you liked the show. Thank you for watching us.